What's up, people? Welcome to the Al York Sports Show. Salute to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Vegas Strong, Vegas Knights, Bronx Bombers, LES to the death. Now, let me not confuse you. I got this jersey on. Me and my boy made a bet. The bet was he's going to wear the Rams shit on my show if he lost. Or I got to put the New England shit with the wristbands on if he won and I lost. So here I am wearing it. All right? I'm wearing it. Because I keep it gully. That's how I do. And before I you know, I do the Al Your Sports Show, let me give some shout outs. Shout outs to the Al Your Sports Show, CWN Sports, Holly Hot Wheels, Zay, my cousin, Match Money, my broski, Noah Parker, Jay Boogie, uh, Let the Ball Bounce, Dre and Goose. Shout out to everybody, man. And rest in peace, Gangstar, man. And with that, I'm going to start the Al Your Sports Show right now. Let's get to it. First things first. Shout out to the Credit Fix, too. Before I move on, you got the Credit Fix. You got the Justin U Apparel on the AlYourSports.com. Let me make sure I get that in there. Now we're going right to the game. I hear a lot of people talk about the game was boring or was it just defense? So I'm going to say a little of both. You know what I'm saying? It was boring and it was defense. But let me explain to you why it was boring to a lot of y'all. I mean, it's multiple reasons. One's because Tom Brady won. A lot of y'all had the Rams, including myself. I had the Rams. Don't let the New England shit fool you. This is a bet that I'm living up to. Trust me, it hurts me to wear this right now. I mean, I wear them when I'm betting money and I win with them. But to me to wear it right now after they took money from me, trust me, I'm upset. But what this game became to be, it was almost like you gave Belichick two weeks to prepare for this young offense, because the offense is young. The quarterback, Gurley's kind of young, and the, and the head coach is young. They defense now got some age on it, you know, you know, with Sue, Donu, you know, Tlaib, Peters, they're not babies. But what happened was a classic case of a Floyd Mayweather fight, which is the boring shit that I hate. But I, to, I, you know, I kind of learned what he was doing, and once I learned what Floyd does, it gave me a different perspective on him and the fight itself, but it's still boring. And I get y'all. What New England did was strip the Rams of everything they did good. Whatever they get, they did good all season long, they took them out of that. And what happened was Jared Goff was not able to make adjustments like I thought he would. I knew Belichick would take this route, but I thought, you know, being in his third season, that he wasn't no Patrick Mahomes where Patrick Mahomes really played one because he sat down the other and they shut him down the first half, but he was able to, you know, do something in the second half. Jared Goff wasn't able to do anything. Uh, that's what made the game boring because you've seen a team that scored points all year basically get shut down on some Floyd Mayweather shit. And I understand y'all because believe me, I hate Mayweather fights. I barely like him. And the way he fights, but what he does is he's a technician. He takes away what you do best, and it becomes a boring fight. And plus, he doesn't brawl. So I think New England learned a lot from the last two seasons to this season. The last two seasons, they kind of brawl with these two teams, which made a lot of points, and them end up splitting, which they should have lost both of them to the Dirty Birds and to the Eagles last year, which they beat the Dirty Birds, but then they lost to the Eagles. This year, Belichick was like, fuck making show for the world. I'm going to win this ugly, boring-ass game, and I'm going to take away everything they do good. Everything. Because they took Gurley out. They took basically Woods was like, you know, 70, 80 yards. Cooks had 120, but a lot of that came on the last drive when they were playing prevent, when they were down 13-3, and go through for two-something because of the prevent also. He picked up another quick 50, 60, 70 yards that was basically prevent defense. New England played a hell of a game. Whether it was boring or not, they had the master game plan. You got to salute them. They're 6-3 now in chip play. They stayed ninth Super Bowl in 18 years. And these guys are great. And Tom Brady, guys, you got to stop hating on the dude, man. I'm hearing he's a cheater. He's this. He's that. How can you congratulate a cheater? Let me tell y'all something, man. 
I want y'all to look dead at me as I'm looking right now on the camera, man. Y'all gonna tell me y'all live the perfect fucking life? Y'all gonna tell me y'all never cheated on your woman? You never cheated at a job? You never cheated on your moms? When your moms tell you not to do something and you did it? That's considered cheating, nigga. I'm not a Brady fan. Let me make this shit clear. Like, like my boy Goose from our LTBB said, it's hard to conceive him. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Joe Montana dude. All day, every day. AKA Joe Cool, nigga. I love me Montana. Never liked the 49ers, but Joe was my dude. Brady got him, man. What else does Brady got to do? And the reason why I'm conceiving him, because I'm a man of second chances. And what he do? The flake gate? When you really think about it? Because the tuck rule, he didn't cheat. The referees fucked that up. And all that man genie, the camera, that was Bill Belichick. So if he cheated, it had to be the deflate gate. And when you think about it, all he did was have an average game on that game. What did he do for 220 something? And then I hear people knocking him. Oh, he didn't have a great game this game. Let me give y'all some numbers, bro. This was his game, uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And I don't think it's by far one of his worst games in the Super Bowl. But I know at least 16, 17 quarterbacks that would like to have these numbers on a, on a weekly average. He went 21 for 35 for 262. 21 for 35 for 262. No touchdowns, one pick. That's what really looked bad. But the 21 for 35 for 262 is beyond average. His QBR was horrible, though, 25.8. And his uh, RTG was 71.4. So he didn't have a breakout game. They didn't win because of him. They won to me because of their defense. I would admit that. But he did enough. And he definitely did enough when it counted. When he moved them on that last drive. Hitting Edelman. Hitting White. Hitting Gronkowski deep. He did his part, man. He did his part. I don't care what y'all say. He did his fucking part. Was he MVP of the game? No. They gave it to Julian Edelman because it's well deserved. He he did, you know, he got a lot of short passes and took him another 10, 15 yard. Edelman was the, a beast that day, which I really didn't think he would because I thought they were going to double team him. But that's to tell you that, you know, that other coach, McVay, got definitely out coached severely. Severely. Belichick had two weeks. Belichick whined, dined, cooked him up, did what he had to do. Out coached the little nigga, 33 year old motherfucker, to death. And not to mention, Patriots look hungrier on the field. When you look at the game, they look hungrier. It was almost like a boxing match where you know that the other boxer ain't going to last too long. Like you could tell, like every time he get hit, his legs wiggle a little bit. So it, it felt like that to me where I knew. That's why I made the halftime show. And I said that if Gurley don't step up and start moving the ball and the Rams get into some kind of momentum, this game is over, man. And that's what happened, exactly what happened. Although it took to the fourth quarter with seven minutes left, but it didn't matter. New England, the only one, they covered the fucking teaser. They won 13 to three, covered the spread, and they won. Ain't no other way to say it. You got to stop hating on Brady. Man, let me tell you something. For those people that knocked his numbers this week, I'm going to give you some numbers from last year that he got zero credit for because they lost. 24 for 48. 505 yards. One game against the Eagles. Three touchdowns, no picks. QBR, 83.8. That's a good QBR. The other one, that 25 shit, I understand. He had less than an average game or barely an average game. They still won. I guarantee you Tom Brady prefers to take that QBR, 25.8 with a 13-3 win and, and a less than the average game that he uh, he's accustomed to putting out, then take that 505 yards, three touchdowns, 24 for 48, 83.8 QBR, and lose. Any day. And that's why he's the GOAT to me. Because it ain't about numbers with him. He wants to win. Brady is a winner. That whole organization is. And trust me, it hurts me to say that because they from Beantown. That's where the Red Sox is at. I'm a Yankee fan. But, yo, I, you got to give it up, man. I give it up, man. And I understand my LES dudes because 
you guys never give it up. You guys ain't give it up to me, and I don't been through everything but fucking died. I've been through it all but death, and y'all niggas still don't give me no love. Not all of y'all. A lot of y'all do, and a lot of y'all don't. And trust me, I know who's who. I just play along with shit because at the end of the day, you're going to be you, I'm going to be me. But there's a time you just got to start giving up props to niggas, man. You, you, it's just, if you don't, then you just, you don't belong on this earth, dog. You're not a fair caller. There's a time where you have to give it up to niggas. I don't like Puffy. I don't like Mayweather. But they well accomplished individuals. Them niggas got bank, got did they think, whatever way they did it, they did it. And them niggas is on top. Why niggas is at the bottom? At the bottom. Do the math. Stop being bitches, niggas. When niggas deserve the props, give it up, man. Give it up, man. Stop fucking hating. Tom Brady's the GOAT, man. Trust me, I don't want to say this. I hate saying it. But the truth is making me say it. Because I'm the raw truth, man. I'm going to give y'all nothing but the truth, man. Y'all need to understand that shit. That's why y'all need to tune in. All y'all niggas that like that real shit, that truth shit, that I'm in a hotel with a shorty and didn't smash, and I come out and I say I didn't smash, I'm the nigga to fuck with. But if you want niggas that be lying and shit, oh, I smashed that, they ain't smashed. I got 80 Gs put away, they got like one G put away. Those are the niggas you want, I'm not for you, bro. I'm not, take me off your list. But you want a nigga that speak the truth and holler the truth? Holler at me. Could only be the one I'm wearing this fucking jersey. It's because I'm keeping my word. I don't want to wear this shit. These niggas took money from me this week. I gave it out in public to all the fucking niggas that tune into my shit. You think I want to wear this shit? But my word got me wearing it. Because at the end of the day, my niggas, remember this. When you go to that coffin, this don't mean nothing. This here don't mean nothing. Whatever you driving don't mean nothing. Whatever you got in the bank don't mean nothing. The only thing you can take to that coffin is your motherfucking word. And remember that shit, man. Al York Sports, I ain't mean to get real technical with it, but I'm tired of niggas hating for all the fucking wrong reasons, man. Step your fucking game up and give it up when props is due. Right now, I went so in on this subject, I couldn't even cover the Anthony Davis Lakers shit. But y'all already know I've been called that since Kawhi Leonard's name was up for grabs. So, Anthony Davis will wind up with the Lakers, like I said, multiple months ago. And, and y'all can check it in my videos, because the facts and the proof is in the pudding. Hold your hands, Al York Sports. I love y'all, CWN Sports, and we be back on Sunday, 11 Pacific, 2 Eastern. I'll see y'all sooner than later. Peace, L.E.S. to the devil.